Werner von Braun was one of the most brilliant scientists of the Third Reich, considered the father of German rocketry and the American space project. But how was this possible? How did one of Hitler's top scientists end up sending Americans to the moon? Well, this is exactly what we are going to see throughout this program. When the Soviets launched their Vistula offensive in mid-January 1945, von Braun was at the Peenemünde scientific base, which was about 180 kilometers north of Berlin, very close to the mouth of the Oder River. Because the Soviets began to advance very quickly through the former Polish territory, and were getting dangerously close to the Oder, von Braun gathered his staff and debated the plan to adopt. Would they continue working in the laboratories? Would they quit their job and try to turn themselves into the Americans or Soviets to offer their services, in exchange for a new privileged position? These were the two main questions during said meeting. On the other hand, the head of the large Peenemund Laboratory and Testing Ground, SS General Hans Kammler, ordered the scientists to move to another base that was right in the center of Germany, about 120 kilometers southeast of Hanover. At the same time, there was another cross order from a regional governor, ordering them to mobilize for combat in the vicinity of Oder. Naturally, all the scientists agreed that it was better to move to central Germany to continue working in a laboratory in an area quite far from the fighting. Thus, in mid-February the scientists were already installed in their new jobs. Because these new laboratories would not be able to continue working on projects of great importance, much documentation was destroyed or hidden so that it would not fall into Allied hands. It was near this new base in central Germany, where an abandoned iron mine near the city of Golser was used to hide no less than 14 tons of German rocketry documents, related to the V-2, and other more modern and improved models. During the month of March, von Braun was in a car accident in which he suffered a fracture to his left arm and shoulder. The accident took place because his driver fell asleep at the wheel. The difficult situation that Germany was going through made the German scientist want to return to work as soon as possible, which caused his bones to not heal properly, and he had to be hospitalized in April. While von Braun was in this situation, by early April the Western Allies were advancing into Germany with little resistance. This led to the team of about 450 scientists having to be transferred again to the small town of Oberammergau, located in the heart of the Bavarian Alps. Although it seemed that their situation was enviable once again away from the combat zone, the truth was that they were guarded by SS guards, who had orders to execute them all before they fell into American hands. However, von Braun was able to convince the SS commander who was guarding them not to kill the scientists, and they were finally captured by the Americans on April 29, when they entered said Alpine town. In any case, and since von Braun did not trust him, he ended up fleeing the place with a small group of highly specialized scientists and headed to Austria. There they were able to surrender to the Americans of the 44th Infantry Division on May 2. As he told it, he introduced himself to American soldiers as the men who had invented the V-2. A few days later, in an attempt to win over North American public opinion, the German scientist declared the following in an interview. We knew that we had created a new means of warfare, and the question of which victorious nation we were willing to entrust this creation to was a moral decision more than anything else. We wanted the world to be saved from another conflict like the one Germany had just gone through, and we felt that only by giving such a weapon to people who are not guided by the laws of materialism, but by Christianity and humanity, could they ensure a better future for the world. With these words, von Braun identified himself with the Americans, and categorically rejected the Soviets, against whom he pledged to fight, now under the flag of the United States. When the American High Command received the news that their soldiers had captured von Braun, they were overjoyed because this German scientist was at the top of the list of German scientists they wanted to capture. The first thing they did with him was to subject him to a series of interrogations in the same Austrian area where they had taken him prisoner. After a month in Austria, and just two days before having to cede the territory to the Soviets, the Americans transferred von Braun to Munich, along with other men he trusted. From Munich they took him to the base in central Germany, 
where the group of German scientists had last been working. The interrogations to which the German scientist had been subjected led him to reveal the location of all the documentation regarding the German rocket project, which they had hidden in the iron mine near Goslar. From that point on, the famous German scientist was taken from one place to another, until he ended up at Kronzberg Castle, located very close to Frankfurt am Main. This was the place where the British and Americans brought together a large part of the scientific, economic, industrial and technological elite of the Third Reich. Through a series of interviews and interrogations, many of these German personalities were recruited and integrated into Operation Paperclip. In summary, Operation Paperclip was a secret United States intelligence program in which more than 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were brought from Germany to the United States to work for the American government. As we will see below, many of them ended up being placed in key positions in the CIA or NASA. It was specifically on June 20, 1945, when the Americans approved von Braun's transfer to the United States, making him sign a work contract with the U.S. Army Artillery Corps. The first thing the team of German scientists led by Braun had to do was organize and classify all the documents that had been rescued from Germany in relation to their rocketry work. The new residence of these scientists was a military base at Fort Bliss, located in Texas, near the city of El Paso. During the first years, the conditions in which they were kept were quite harsh, and many Germans complained about both the food and their residences. In addition, von Braun also complained that he was not receiving the material necessary to progress his guided rocket program. On one occasion, he even said that at their base in Piedmont they had never lacked for anything, while in the United States they had to count every penny. Furthermore, the team he had in charge of him was also infinitely smaller than the one he had had in Germany. Thus, during the first few years and unfortunately for him, all of his proposals and requests were rejected. Everything changed for him in 1950 after the outbreak of the Korean War. In this year, Von Braun and his team were transferred to Alabama, to a new military installation, where they would work on new projects. Thus, the new work he carried out in Alabama resulted in the development of the first high-precision inertial guidance system in rockets. In addition, he also designed rockets with which nuclear bombs could be launched. In the mid-1950s, Von Braun assumed leadership of the Development Operations Division of the Army's Ballistic Missile Agency, and was able to design the first rockets to be launched into space. This made it possible for the first Western satellite to be placed into orbit on January 31, 1958, beginning the United States space program. It should be noted that just a few months earlier the Soviets had managed to put Sputnik 1 into orbit, therefore being the first. This event caused von Braun to be given more prominence, in an attempt to win this race against the Soviets. So, from here on, the German scientist became increasingly famous, talking about the construction of large space stations or even carrying out manned trips to Mars. In 1958, President Eisenhower created NASA to compete with the Soviets in the space race. In this way, and because von Braun was the most brilliant scientist they had in everything related to rocketry, in 1960 he was named director of the center where the Saturn rocket was being developed. Braun was in this position until 1970, and was key in the development of the Apollo program, which in 1969 was able to successfully land men on the moon. Once they reached the moon, the American space program began to lose interest, and funding was reduced despite the German scientists' protests. This cutback and loss of interest led von Braun to resign from any position at NASA in May 1972, and from then on he dedicated himself to working in a private aerospace company. Unfortunately for him, just a year later he was diagnosed with kidney cancer, which ended up taking his life four years later in 1977. Just as he was in the hospital about to die, President Ford bestowed upon him the country's highest scientific honor, awarding him the National Medal of Science and Engineering. As we have seen throughout this program, Braun was a key man for the United States, and this is demonstrated by the photos of him with each of the presidents of said country. So, what did you think of this program? 
What do you think about the second life of Vaughn Braun in the United States, and his importance in the Apollo project?